We are supposed to be dying as a Muslim. Nobody can say that they are going to survive forever. Malakul Maut will come and visit any moment, any second, and that's it, it's over. Don't matter how strong you are or how weak you are, how tall or how short, how rich or how poor, how mighty or how insignificant, death will come and reach you, and at that moment will you die as a Muslim? He decides when, but the circumstances vary. And we need to make sure from our own side that we die as a Muslim. You see, when we talk about being a Muslim, what do we really think about being a Muslim? What does it actually mean to us? Being a Muslim means somebody who follows Islam. The most mightiest, the most profound, the most beautiful, the most elevated, the most dignified, the most elated way of life chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his servants to be people who have good in this world and good in the hereafter. That is what Islam is. And to be a Muslim means to be a follower of that path. When we say Muslim, Islam, Islam is not just a religion, it's not just an ideology, a political system. Rather, Islam is the way of life, the divine way of life, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate mankind from the darkness of worshipping creation to the nur of worshipping a nur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Islam is. That takes people away from all the false trajectories and takes them to the path of guidance where Allah is pleased with them. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them and they're pleased with Allah. What is Islam to us? That is the question we need to ask. That for the good Muslim, Islam is his intellectual leadership. Meaning whenever he wants to do something, he will always go back to Islam and see what Islam says. What is the Islamic ruling on this situation? What is the Islamic viewpoint on this situation? Islam is very important. And the people who symbolize Islam are you, me, us, and the Muslim community. So ask yourself, how did we represent Islam today? How did we represent Islam yesterday? And how are we going to represent Islam tomorrow if we do make it to tomorrow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen, He said how it should be a Muslim. He said, قُلْ إِنَّا صَلَاتِ وَنُسْكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ that verily my prayers, my sacrifice, my living, my dying is all for the Lord of all that exists. And I will not commit any shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have been ordered, and I have been ordered to be from the first of the Muslims, not third in line, not British, Pakistani, Muslim, not Bengali, Sileti, Lutonian, London, Muslim, Muslim, awwal Muslimin. They have to be Muslim first. Muslim middle, Muslim last. That I'll continue living, breathing, thinking, behaving Muslim until I die. So that way, wala tamutunna ilu antu muslimun is actualized in me. You see, the Muslim is a person who submits himself, surrenders himself, his life, his thinking to the one that created him. That's who a Muslim is. That you have a relationship with Allah Ar Rahman, that your time is spent pondering over the greatness and the mightiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you have a connection. You have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you hear His name, your skin starts to shiver and quiver, and your heart is full of, uh, full of fear and hope and hope, and your eyes are soaking with tears. That's the Muslim. That he has a complete connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One incident took place, which was the Sahaba, while they were traveling by boats, storm came and the boat capsized and they were stranded in a deserted island. When they went there, they saw a man making idols and worshipping them. So seeing this, they were shocked and they were, they were really upset by this. So they spoke to the man after, you know, uh, uh, bettering the situation. And they, they spoke to the man and they said, why do you worship this fool? Why don't you worship the one who created all of this? And they started giving him da'wah. They started inviting him to Islam. And afterwards, the man said, all right, tell me a bit more about this Lord of mine. After giving relevant information, the man was so impressed. And he said, how do you know about this Lord? So the Sahaba said, Allah SWT sent a messenger with guidance. He was telling me about this messenger. So they told him about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After informing them about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, did he leave anything behind? So the Sahaba said, yes. He left, came with a book and he left that behind with us so that we can continue our journey after him. He said, can you read this to me? So they started reciting the Qur'an. Hearing the recitation of the Qur'an 
had such a profound effect. He goes, whoever said this must be the truth. And he testified his submission, his Islam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at his, this man. That he was, he had everything he wanted in this deserted island. He had everything. But when he found the truth, that all that became insignificant for him. And he wanted to embrace the path of his Lord. Even though he stranded in a what deserted island. After some time, the Sahaba, they were able to repair the patch, the boats. And they basically made the journey back to port. And in the journey back, in the journey back, the man was so amazed by his religion. So amazed by Islam. So amazed. They constantly ask questions. Constantly ask questions. And ask yourself, when was the last time you had a question about Islam that really intrigued you? That you, this is so amazing. Let me find out a bit more about this. Let me be really, you know, I'm really curious about Islam. When was the last time we asked the question? And that will find out how much curiosity we have about learning about Islam. Did we even ask the question today? Or what's the hukum of this? What's the ruling of this? Who was this person in Islam? Why is this personality? How did they do this? What was, tell me something about Rasulullah SAW. How did Rasulullah SAW look? How did he used to talk? How did he used to behave? Are we intrigued by Islam? When was the last time we went to open a book? Let me discover something about my Lord. Let me discover something about the path of my Lord. It speaks volumes about ourselves, our own behavior and our own actions. So anyway, one strange question this uh, former mushrik now become Muslim, he asked, he said, um, I want to know something about my Lord, because that was the most interesting topic for him. Does my Lord uh, sleep? Does my Lord sleep? Because obviously he knows his own lifestyle, he knows the idols, he knows the, the rocks he used to worship in the deserted island. So the Sahaba recited Ayat Kursi and they said, neither sleep nor slumber overtakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was so amazed, he said, then how is it that you people are the servants of Allah, you sleep while your master is still awake? He was shocked, how dare uh, the audacity of the servant that he rests before his Lord. And obviously they explained to him, right, you know what, this man has a lot of zeal. They explained to him, no, we are allowed to rest apart. Master's already given that permission. But you see how he's thinking. He's thinking about which is the best way I can serve my Lord. So anyway, once they came port, they decided to gather some money. And uh, they went to give that money to this new uh, Muslim. So when they gave the money, they said, you people are strange. And the Sahaba said, why? He goes, you don't even recognize your own Lord by offering me this money. And they said, what do you mean? He said, I was stranded in a deserted island. There was no human, nobody, nothing. And I was worshipping idols. I was committing shirk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not one moment went by where my Lord did not provide. And that was me as a mushrik. And now that I become a Muslim, is my Lord going to stop providing for me? You don't understand Islam. Look at the understanding this man, a profound understanding of Islam he had. He had full tawakkul and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if I, if I, when I didn't submit, Allah provided for me. Now that I sub submitted, Allah will provide for me even more. That is what you call a Muslim. My advice to myself and my advice to you brothers and my advice to my own children is what? Die and die as a Muslim only. When the moment of death comes, make sure you die as a Muslim. Make sure you work hardest to be a Muslim. Otherwise, all that is comes to a waste. All that energy and all that strength and all that uh, ability that we accumulate for our life, all that comes to waste. How many rich people were there and they're no more now? Where is their wealth enjoyed by somebody else? They're in the grave, wishing if only I died a Muslim. And we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to live our life as Muslims. You see, when we talk about being a Muslim, we're talking about attaching ourselves to the most profound legacy and heritage of human civilization. When I say I'm a Muslim, I am attaching myself to whom? Have you ever thought that for a moment? I'm attaching myself with my father Adam Islam, with Nuh Islam, with Ibrahim Islam, with Musa Islam, with Isa Islam, with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and all the Muslims that came in between, and all the prophets and messengers that came in between, and all the Muslims that come after us. We attach ourselves, our loyalty with them. Umar bin Khattab famously used to champion the words, we are people, we are people elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Islam. That is your elevation. That we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We submit to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. to billahi rabba wa bi islami deena wa bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasoola. That we are pleased. Allah is my Lord. Islam is my religion. 
and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my prophet. That's who the Muslim is. How am I going to die a Muslim if I'm not prepared to live as a Muslim? Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, walhamdulillah, alameen. Any good I said is from Allah and the mistakes are from myself.